Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. So I'm going to do a bit of a different video this time. This one is called Faces of Evil. Five evil Nazis you've probably never heard of. Now most of you have heard of Hitler and Himmler and Adolf Eichmann, but these guys never really pulled the trigger or dropped the bombs. They were the people who told others to do it. I'm going to look at five truly shockingly depraved individuals within the Nazi party who did get their hands very, very dirty indeed. Starting off my list is at number five is Otto Greiser. Now, unless you're either an historian or you're Polish, the chances are you've never heard of Otto Greiser. Greiser was a Nazi Gauleiter, which is basically a district leader. And he was in charge of an area of occupied Poland called the Wartegau. Greiser, along with other Gauleiters, was tasked with Germanizing his district, and his methods were brutal to say the least. Greiser found mass deportations to be his favoured choice, where he could, and he used the general government district, basically southern Poland, run by Hans Frank, as a dumping ground. But when he was unable to use this method, well, he merely ordered mass executions to solve his little problem. He also actively participated in the Holocaust, and his district housed the Chalmno extermination camp, the very camp that carried out the very first experiments in gassing Jews with the use of the gas vans. Greiser himself was captured at the end of the war, and he stood trial for war crimes and crimes against humanity by the Polish government. Unsurprisingly, he was found guilty of all charges and was executed at Fort Winery in Posen in 1946 in front of a very large crowd. He has the distinction of being the very last person to be executed publicly in Poland. Next on my list, at number four, I have Otto Ollendorf. Ollendorf was a member of the SS and he came from Lower Saxony in Germany. A very educated man. He studied both economics and law at the universities of Leipzig and Göttingen. He then went on to the University of Pavia where he obtained a doctorate. He joined the Nazi party in 1925 and became a member of the SS a year later. Ollendorf was the commander of a, play, a thing called Einsatzgruppen D. Now the Einsatzgruppen or task force were SS units tasked with hunting down Jews and others the Nazis found undesirable in the occupied territories and basically execute them. Under Ollendorf's command, Einsatzgruppen D committed the Baba Yar massacre in Ukraine and there is evidence from the SS itself that Einsatzgruppen D executed 137,272 people in a period of five months although this is undoubtedly a very conservative figure and was most likely a lot more than that. Not content with his command of the Einsatzgruppen, Ollendorf was also the deputy director of the Reich Economic Office, where he was instrumental in shaping Nazi economic doctrine, which included the use of Jewish possessions that were seized in the concentration camp system. Ollendorf was captured at the end of the war and stood trial at Nuremberg in the Einsatzgruppen trial, where he was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. He was executed in 1951 at Landsberg prison, the very same prison that had once housed Hitler. Number three, we have Josef Kramer. Now, most people have heard of the likes of Rudolf Hoss, the infamous commander of Auschwitz, but not many have heard of Josef Kramer. Kramer came from a strict Roman Catholic background, but this didn't prevent him from joining the SS as soon as he could. An uneducated man, he served at a concentration camp guard in the first SS camp, Dachau, and he eventually became the assistant to Rudolf Hoss. He steadily rose through the ranks whilst at Auschwitz and became the commander of operations for Auschwitz II, Birkenau, which was the execution part of the Auschwitz camp system. In late 1944, however, he was sent to the new concentration camp Bergen-Bausen in Germany as this new commander. Bergen-Bausen, however, was not an execution camp, 
But this didn't prevent over 50,000 Jews and 20,000 Russian prisoners of war from being killed. Unlike Auschwitz, a proper execution camp, which had gas chambers and crematoria to deal with the daily death toll, Bergen-Bausen was not designed to execute anyone, and under Kramer's leadership, the inmates suffered starvation, disease and mistreatment by the guards, and was subjected to a slow, painful and horrible death. Thankfully, Kramer was captured by the British at the end of the war and faced trial in the Bausen trial, presided over by the British. He was found guilty on all charges and sentenced to death. He was hanged in the town of Hamblin in 1945. Number two on my list is the only non-German, Bronislaw Kaminski. Again, unless you're an historian or Polish, chances are you've never heard of Kaminski. Born in what is now modern-day Belarus, Kaminsky served in the Red Army during the Russian Civil War between 1917 and 1923. He was then caught up in Stalin's Great Purge of 1936, where he escaped execution but was sent to a gulag. He was released from the gulag system in 1941 and settled in Bryansk. When the German army advanced on Bryansk in 1941, Kaminsky, along with his friend Voskinik, approached the Germans in order to offer their services as collaborators. Voskinek was appointed the local mayor and Kaminsky his deputy, but Kaminsky was not content with this civil appointment and he raised an armed militia of around 10,000 men with the aim of crushing the Russian partisans. In 1942 this militia was reclassified as the Russian Liberation National Army or Rona for short. The unit operated mainly in Belarus and solely on anti-partisan activities. Where Kaminsky became close to the commander of the 36th SS Brigade, Oskar Derlivanger. Both men shared the same theory on brutality and together they would hunt down both partisans and basically anyone they wanted to using the most brutal methods available. Whilst Kaminsky should make this list for that alone, it's actually his role in the Warsaw Uprising that puts him so high. Working alongside his friend Derlevanger again in, in Warsaw, Kaminsky and his brigade actually outshone the 36th SS Derlevanger brigade in its brutality towards the Warsaw Poles, which is quite a feat considering the Derlevanger brigade was one of the most brutal of all the SS units. Kaminsky, however, fell out of favour with Himmler, the head of the SS, and he was arrested shortly after the Warsaw Uprising for ironically, misconduct towards Poles during the Warsaw Uprising, which in itself is laughable, considering that the Nazis were hell-bent on destroying everyone and everything in Warsaw. Kaminsky was eventually executed by the Nazis in 44, at an unknown location, although it is believed to have been Posen. Number one on my list is truly a sick individual, Theodore Eicher. Eicher was born in Ampont, which is now modern-day France, but it was once Germany. Eicher was, by all accounts, a complete underachiever at school, dropping out before graduating and enlisting in the German army to serve in World War I. After the war, he became a policeman, but he was fired due to his opposition to the Weimar government. Eicher then joined the Nazi party in 1928, quite a latecomer and initially found a home with the SA, or the brown shirts under Ernst Röhm. Eicher was then snapped up by Himmler to join the SS in 1930, where he became the architect of the concentration camp system, and became the very first commander of the Dachau camp, the first concentration camp set up by the Nazis. At that time, though, this was purely a political prisoner camp, and not the extermination camp it would later become, although that did not prevent Eicher from employing incredibly brutal methods. Eicher was also tasked with executing his previous mentor, Ernst Röhm, during the Night of the Long Knives, when the Nazis rose up against the SA. The SA. Eicher gave Röhm the choice of suicide or execution, and literally gave him 10 minutes to decide. When Rom failed to kill himself after the 10 minutes, Eicher is reported to have snatched the pistol out of his hand and shot him through the head. Eicher doesn't make the list for that, however, 
although being the first commander of Dachau would allow him that honour. It was what happened later that really set Eicher apart. He became the overall inspector of the concentration camps. Not to make sure that the inmates were treated humanely, but to make sure that the SS who ran the camps didn't steal for personal gain, and they weren't actively killing the people quickly enough. Eichert was instrumental in this role in setting up all the concentration camps throughout the Nazi Empire and making sure they all followed the same brutal model he himself had created for Dachau. As the head of the concentration camps and its guards, the Totenkopf, eventually he managed to form a Waffen SS or SS fighting unit entitled the 3rd Waffen SS Totenkopf Division. This unit were not necessarily made up of concentration camp guards, but they were equally as brutal. Under Eicher's command, the SS Tottenkopf served on the Eastern Front and brought with it a level of brutality and destruction that even the Wehrmacht, the traditional German army, complained about. Nevertheless, the 3rd SS Tottenkopf Division became one of the most effective SS fighting units, albeit thanks to its brutality and the war crimes it committed such as the murder of the 97 British POWs in La Paradis in France in 1940, which, to be fair, pales in comparison to the atrocities committed by the unit against Soviets, both soldiers and civilians alike. Eicher himself was killed in 1943 during the opening stages for the Battle of Kharkov, when his reconnaissance plane was shot down by the Soviets. He was hailed as a Nazi hero, and he was buried with full honours in Ukraine. His body remained in Ukraine after the war, but it was probably destroyed by the Soviets, as it was Soviet policy to destroy all German grave sites. Anyway, that's been my list of top five evil Nazis that you've probably never heard of. And there are loads more, but I will consider doing other lists like this if people like this kind of thing. Anyway, I've been fooded. I hope you enjoyed that. By all means, comment in everything below. And until the next time, I hope to see you for my next video, which shall come out shortly. Um, don't know what it's going to be about yet, but no doubt it'll be something historical. Until then, stay safe and all the best. Bye for now.